Welcome back students. We have finished our lecture series based on counters and now the next topic that we would be discussing is uh, shift registers. So let us start with the definition of registers. So register is nothing but a group of flip-flops and uh, they share a common clock. And uh, already we have uh, discussed that flip-flop basically stores one bit of data so if we combine various flip-flops it creates a register so that is what is mentioned in point number two that if you are having an n bit register that would be composed of n number of flip-flops and hence since each flip-flop is able to store one bit of data so we can say n number of flip-flops will store n bits of information and the third point you obviously know that shift register is an example of a sequential circuit means the output is dependent on the previous state of the output as well then the next point that you need to understand regarding the registers is they are not like counters what makes them different from counters is that they don't follow any specified sequence like once we were discussing counters in our videos so it was following a certain sequence the sequence could have been an up counter it could have been a down counter or it could have been a random counter but even if it would have been a random the sequence would have been given in the design problem as well so the point is the counter follows any specific sequence that is given in the question but the register do not follow any particular sequence so this property makes them different from a counter now what is the function that a register can do so there are two important things a register can perform one we call as data storage and this property is basically utilized to create a memory out of it and the second important property of a register is the data movement and that property basically we use for shifting the data so these are two very important points regarding register we can use them either as a data storage element uh, acting as a memory or we can use them for data movement and uh, that is basically what we call as a shifting property furthermore we must also understand the different types of uh, you can say registers so the different types of registers available is serial in serial out we call this as siso in short form the second one is serial in parallel out the third one is parallel in serial out and the fourth one is parallel in parallel out serial in serial out means your input would be in the form of series of data and the output would also be in serial form if it is SIPO the input would be in series and output would be in parallel same way parallel in serial out input is parallel output is series and parallel in parallel out so these are four types of shift registers there are two more registers which are actually creating a type of counter it is because here again they follow a certain sequence and we would see in the coming lectures these two applications as well where the register follows a particular sequence and uh, to understand these four types of uh, you can say registers let us have few diagrams now if you look at the first diagram you can see here in and out it means suppose your data is uh, double one double zero so this data would be stored here in the form of double one double zero and this data at the output would also be in this format so this is a series here serial in and this is serial out so this is siso form that is the first type same is uh, given in the second diagram also but only thing is your input is coming from this side and the output is coming from this side and the rest is same 
Now, how are they different? This is basically moving your data. The first diagram uh, corresponds to moving your data or you can say shifting your data towards right and the second diagram is telling you you are moving your data towards left and both of them are the examples of the first type of register that is SISO. Then the second type we have studied is serial in parallel out. So, the example is here suppose you are having a data in the form of double one double zero, but then the output you can see it is coming from all four flip flops at the same time. You can say you are taking output from all the flip flops while as in SISO the output was only available at the end at the last flip flop. Then the third one you have uh, seen in the types was PISO means the data that is given to you is given in the form of parallel form, but the output is taken only in the serial form. We would see its applications as well where do we use it in the subsequent lectures. Today I am only introducing to you the different types of shift registers and the last one we had studied was PIPO where the input as well as the output would be in the form of parallel. These were four types furthermore I told you there are two special counters one we called as ring and other one we call as Johnson. Now, what they do suppose we are having some data in the form of 1 and triple 0 then what we do the output of the last flip flop is connected as input to the first flip flop and then the shifting continues at every clock pulse such type of counter we call as ring counter and Johnson counter is again same in the Johnson counter instead of q the output q bar is given back as input to the first flip flop and you would see in the lectures coming uh, regarding these registers that there is a difference between these two in number of states. So, this was simply a brief introduction regarding the registers uh, what they are in terms of their definition and what are the different functions they can perform and what are the different types of registers available. In the coming video we will directly start with the types of registers in detail till then you can revise your notes and in case you are having some doubts do ask here I would be happy to answer your doubts till then God bless you and thank you all.